My name is Edward Fleming. I am a filmmaker, although I have always been interested in the music industry. To the best of my knowledge, there isn't an official manual for making it big. However, I don't know anyone who knows more about the gateway process than musicians themselves. The Music Industry, a how-to guide by the upcoming musicians of Nottingham. I always got told to treat everything as an opportunity. It doesn't matter if you're not getting paid, it doesn't matter if it's miles away. You need to know where you want to go. It's all, it's, you know, it's very well saying, I want to be a big superstar or everything, but you need to, you need to be able to go, I want to emulate the success of this person or I want to do this kind of stuff. Go out and gig. Like, nothing is better than um, singing for people who are genuinely interested in your music and it gives you a really good insight into what songs um, the type of songs that people like and the type of songs that are a bit more artistic uh, and how to deliver a performance. Well, never stop. Yeah. Never yeah. stop. Don't, don't yeah. take don't a day take off. Don't take breaks for constantly. practice and Just constantly for force yourself down. Not not down people's throat, but like make yourself. Be everywhere. <laughs> put yourself on their newsfeed, basically. If you're a, a rock band, you have to have a sort of certain image, I think, because it sort of goes with the music. So if you can, if you look like, I don't know, like wearing a, a cardigan or something and then you start doing like screamo, it wouldn't really fit, would it? Honestly, I mean, I can't lie and say it's not about your image because it is about your image. Everything is about your image in the world, but it's more, it's actually about the talent because you can be the best looking person in the world and if you have no substance, you're not going to get far. So it's about substance, really. The problem with um, looking attractive and playing a guitar you're easier to pick apart because there's always someone better looking, there's always someone better at the guitar and you, your career is fickle as soon as you, your looks go. You ask and you sometimes get turned down and sometimes you make it, you know, it's, it's really just the luck of the draw. Um, it's not difficult at all, getting good gigs is difficult. When I first started gigging, I did every single gig that, gig that I could. I played at a fruit and veg competition uh, which is a very, very weird one. Um, and I did some other one that, looking back now, I kind of think, why did I do that? Playing open mics, I think open mics are great for people who want the opportunity to play live, um, you know, get that experience of playing in front of uh, sort of, you know, a small number of people. I think if you are particularly an acoustic artist or a band, you can't gig too much to start with. You need to go out there and you need to meet the people who are putting on the shows. Um, via open mics or acoustic nights and you need to perform in front of people. You don't want to be playing to you know people that aren't listening to your music that are just drunk and just not paying attention to you at all. Don't accept every gig. Check out the venue, check out other gigs at that venue and then decide whether you think that's suitable to you. I think it's about persistence really because you could have you know you could play a show every week and not have anything for six months like no one coming to you and saying oh yeah that's great we want to talk to you. But like if you turn down a show then maybe there might be a promoter there who wants to put you on a bigger stage. So I think play as many gigs as you can and keep at it, keep persistent. I have massive respect for people that on a pouring wet Tuesday night can get people to come into the rain and go and watch them at a gig. That is amazing. And if you can get people to do that, you've got the core of a proper fan base. If you're turning up to a show with a guitar in your hand and a cable to plug your guitar in and a microphone, and just singing for half an hour straight, your own stuff, or other people's stuff, you know, whatever you're into. And if you come off that stage at the end of that gig and think, yeah, well, that was fun, I really enjoyed that. That's, you know, that's, that's all you can ask for. Persistence is key. I always think to myself, I've had a rubbish gig, but you know, it, there's gonna be rubbish gigs, you've gotta push through, you know. Gigging, you have, to, you have to be gigging constantly because to get better, to own your craft, um, promoting yourself, which is, Probably the hardest thing for me is, is promoting ourselves and, and telling people how good you are and telling people that you've got gigs all the time. Just pestering people constantly. There's no money to be made out of it. Yeah, you no, will lose we, We're just so doing it because we enjoy it. We don't make any money whatsoever. We've lost hundreds, thousands of pounds into what we do yeah. just from like practices every week, if you, I think driving if you, to places, recording. If you took recording. the amount of money we've spent as a band total and then on top of that put all the money we've made as a band total, we'll probably get about minus 800. It kind of works both ways. If you're playing gigs but you've got nothing recorded, once people go home they can't hear you. But if, you're, if you've got recorded but you're not playing gigs, 
it's that it needs to be a pretty even thing really. Yeah. If you're starting out and throwing the odd cover in, putting your own twist on it is I think it's, it's, it's like it's a really good thing to do because yeah, it, it makes people recognise you, it makes people be able to relate you to you a bit more and then because yeah. they will hear something I've written myself and it just opens you out a bit more. But I'd say at the level we are now, it's definitely not really appropriate. I to feel like, like yeah, as many yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. we're stuck between sort of, okay we want to do our, we've got all these songs that we've written, we spent ages on, we want to do our completely our own set. There's a lot of pressure. When, when you're sort of in a studio and you've got a guy on the other side of the glass expecting you to sound incredible, you know, and it's... When you're playing live to people, you're kind of like, if you screw up a little bit, nobody really cares, so... So it's it's better that way for me, but honestly, it just depends on, on what people are feeling, I guess. With a lot of new bands, they they can't afford recording and things, so they've got to save up quite a while. So what we do is put them in front of a good videographer with good sound, equipment and get one of their tracks done completely for free and they've got something for them uh, to promote themselves. If you go and play a gig, um, say down in Nottingham or London or France or wherever or America, only a, only a certain amount of people will go to it, like 50, 100, 1000 people will go and see you. Whereas the internet, you can put a video out and overnight hundreds of thousands people can potentially see it. Uh, I know a lot of um, singer-songwriters I know use Snapchat at the moment, so um, they sort of uh, make their own band Snapchat, uh, and fans can add them on there, and they sort of take photos of what they're doing, and that's uh, a sort of a limitless way of showing people what you're doing as well. So it's, I think as long as there are new social media, uh, and there will be artists to sort of exploit it and, and uh, find new ways of connecting with the people who want to listen to their music, which is which is really useful, I think. Uh, for us, it's like a really good tool to communicate with people. Like we message a lot of bands from Facebook, and we find a lot of them. But we don't like in terms of posting statuses and posting tweets, or whatever. I don't, I don't think it's a be all and end all of like trying to make it. But you don't need a good social media following to make it as a musician. I, I would probably have wished to be able to be a musician without the use of social media. Unfortunately, you know nowadays. It's not really possible, you know. Everybody relies on social media to get in contact with promoters, venues, you know, recording studios, blah blah blah. So in that sense, you know, it's good. You know, it's meant people can contact each other more easily. Everyone was at the record shops, but now everyone is on the internet. So when you put a video out, it's just like you're having a gig, but you don't have to go to any expense. It's done on your terms and people will watch it. We did a video a while ago, it got like 19,000 views. We don't even know that many people. A young musician is watching this video. They can play the guitar, write their own songs, and wants to make it big. What advice would you give them? Just keep doing what you're doing. Do what makes you happy. It's, it's the words that I would say to him before anything else. You know, because he has to prioritise himself over everything else. Because, you know, I've been in that situation of sort of making or writing songs to appeal to other people. And I think that's wrong. When you start doing that, you kind of lose sight of, of what it's all about. First, I would say, get people to listen to your songs. Like, even friends, family, tell them, get, get them to tell you what they think of your music. And then record something, put it on SoundCloud, even if it's just a dodgy recording, put it on and send it to whoever you know, contacts, event organizers, do you like my music? What do you think? Would you be free to put me in a gig? Write some songs, whatever stage you're at, go out, perform them, mess about with them, find people that are also like-minded individuals, um, jam out with them, uh, and just start to find your feet, um, really, uh, because you'll have a certain way of doing things and it might be a little bit different to other people's, but it's definitely, it's definitely a find your feet kind of industry, as opposed to a, here's how to do it, off you go. How about keep, keep playing gigs and like keep getting yourself out there and then eventually they'll kind of come to you if you're at the right kind of level. Do write songs, just whatever your mood is. Just come up with a, a chord sequence, put the lyrics to how you're feeling. Keep practicing, never feel that you've reached the best you can be, because then you can always improve on something, whether that's your confidence, your music, musical ability. Um, and just get your stuff out there, put your stuff on YouTube, get some stuff recorded, um, keep writing songs. Um, even if you're writing rubbish, just write it down do it and then you'll eventually find stuff that you like. Do it for yourself, write the music for yourself, play for yourself. If there's three people in the room, play to those three people like 
like there was a hundred people in the room. Because they, they can tell, if there's three people there and, you, and you're not really that bothered, then they're going to go away and think, eh, he wasn't really that bothered. But if you go and give them a show, then they'll, uh, they'll go away and, and remember you and then maybe they'll tell their friends. They presume that, uh, that people want to buy the next One Direction or the next model or, do you know what I mean? That kind yeah. of, that perception, but... People don't know what they want. A, lo a lot of people prefer a genuine artist. So a lot of people stick with something that's true and honest. And if, if you do what you actually want to do, rather than what you think people want you to do... Your you, passion will show. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people are going to appreciate it more. At the end of the day, if, if your dream is to make it big, then go for it. You know, there's, there's nothing that's holding you back from doing that. So why should, why should anybody be afraid of, of just going for it? You know? <laughs> there's, there's no point in holding yourself back to prioritise other people over yourself. Make sure you're happy doing what you're doing and believe me, you'll make it big. Feel it too